Well, hello, boys and girls. This is when I feel like an o'clock on Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom coming to you live from moved over, moved to Vancouver. This is Vancouver high rise. This is, it's Canadian Division Day. Can't be in Seattle. We got to be in Vancouver. Yeah. So I just got the Pearl Copter over here. So we're over here now. And uh, we have everybody in the land here from uh, www.steelflyers.com network. Almost everybody. We're missing one. We're missing Pro Joe, but that's okay. We can, that's all right. We'll have him another time. But we have John from Off the Wall Hockey and SteelFlyer.com. We have Peyton on the radio. Same from Peyton on the radio, coincidentally. And we have SteelFlyers.com. Steel Flyers from SteelFlyers.com. Also coincidentally. Little do you know. That he was going to that it was going to happen that he was going to join something called Steel Flyers when his name was already Steel Flyers. Pretty amazing stuff. Anyways, we are going to do the Canadian division. We're going to get right at her because we have a tendency to sometimes be long winded a little bit. Some of us, some of us. So we we're going to get at her right away. Okay, Canadian division. This is going to be insane. By the way, we should also shout out the fact that hockey starts tomorrow. Freaking. Awesome, man. Can't wait. Uh, Can you tell we're all jacked for that? Let's go. Is this going to be like the season above all seasons, too? Playing in the same division all year? Everybody hating on each other? Can't wait for this every night. Toronto, Montreal, almost, you know, like rivalries for days. This is going to be insane. My kind of hockey. Yes, uh, me too. I can't freaking wait. Uh, So... Let's get to uh, the f- number seven in the division. Seven teams in the division. And we're going to start with John. What's your last place in the division, John? The Ottawa Senators. I I like Ottawa's offseason. I think they've done some good things. Um, they, they've they've brought in some veteran guys. They've, they've tried to make the team better while still giving the young guys uh, a chance to, to really grow in that lineup and continue to develop. But... At the end of the day, looking at the rest of this division, Ottawa is just not there. They're still young. Um, they're still missing pieces. I don't trust Matt Murray in goal, uh, especially with that defense in front of them. I I just can't see. As much as I want to put Ottawa higher, I just can't. I got them finishing last. Okay. Uh, Peyton, what do you got? Uh, same as him, the Ottawa Centers. Uh, I know UG Melnick thinks that they're a playoff team, but not in this division this year. Um, certainly not in this division. Uh, I know that they think of Giddy Dadanov as the next big Russian superstar. Uh, he's pretty good, but he's only going to put up about 30 goals. And Matt Murray's another great pickup. But like John was saying, that defense, it, it's not as great. Uh, they did pick up Stefan as well to help in the leadership role. But honestly, they're not going to be moving... Uh, that far away from bottom place, they'll be mostly sticking down there. Yeah, no doubt. That's funny you said that, from Melnick. <laughs> Eugene <laughs> Melnick. The, he's a PR department's nightmare, isn't he? He's like, <laughs> what's he going to say now? Oh, right. no, no, no. <laughs> All right, Steele, what do you got? Oh, man, I had a hard time with this one, too, because there are seven – uh, teams in this division, uh, which, and then also the fact that they're playing against some of the top tier uh, teams in the NHL. So this is this was tough, and I have to agree with everybody so far on the panel and say that the Senators I, I have down there at the bottom. Okay, I uh, I just agree that their goaltending is suspect. They did bring in some leadership there for for them a little bit, but they're also their defense is suspect. And I just think that they're they're still trying to put together a team, and they're just not quite there yet. Yeah, um, very good points, all of you. Um, I, I I don't think we really have much of a choice but to take Ottawa here. I mean, I'd love to see Kachuk just go off and Stutzla be, you know, the second coming of you know McDavid or something like that, and uh, you know everything aligns. Shabbat gets the Norris and. Who knows? Murray puts a Vesna up there, performance up there, but uh, I those are a lot of huge ifs that would like to have to happen. 
for Ottawa <clears throat> to be in there. So, yeah, we all agree, Ottawa. And that's about, I think, in this division, the last thing that is going to be simple. Uh, yeah. This is a very difficult division. So we're going to go with our number six, and we'll start again in the same rotation. John, what do you got for six? Uh, this is where this whole division started getting really, really difficult. Um, mm -hmm. I hate to do this because of Connor Hellebuck, who is an outstanding goaltender. But I have to go the Winnipeg Jets. Um it's so it's so hard to do that when you literally have the reigning Vezina Trophy winner as your goaltender. But if that if those playoffs weren't expanded to 24 teams last year, I don't think the Jets were getting in. And Connor Hellebuck had a Vezina level season last year, and I still don't think they were going to be a playoff team without the expanded playoffs. And I mean, the top six forwards is so good. I mean, they're, they they have the ability to score. Winnipeg has the ability to be good. And then I look at their decor, and I just go, oh, <laughs> that's going to be what sinks this team. I like Josh Morrissey, but after that, everything is a huge question mark. And I think at the end of the day, when you're in this difficult of a division, playing this many good teams on a night-in and night-out basis – uh, that D is just going to eventually crumble, and I have them at six. Yeah, I can definitely see that. That's a very good point. Uh, Peyton, what do you got? Bud? Uh, I'm the same with John. Uh, this division was so tough, and I felt bad even putting Winnipeg in this spot because uh, if they improve that defense a bit, and which I think they will next year, especially a lot of people coming off the books, um, I think they'll be able to improve it just a bit. But they did that this year. They gave uh, a little bit of stepping stones, picking up Forbert. Uh, they didn't make it to look too bad. But with this division, it's a really stacked division. And only having two lines is not going to get you very far, especially with that defensive core. Hellebuick might be able to carry you a couple of games, but uh, especially in this really stacked division, there's a lot of good goalie tandems. And when you're having to rely on one goalie, it's going to be pretty difficult for him this season. So I have Winnipeg in sixth. Okay. Well, good. You know what? I, I'll tell you after. But Steele, what do you <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to go a little bit south on that. And uh, I, I selected Calgary here for this. Because of the very reasons why these guys were talking, it was very difficult to select these next couple of teams here because a lot of things depend on how teams come together especially with being in a shortened camp and especially with it being you know no preseason games and things of that nature uh i i think that calgary has enough offense but i really have questions about markstrom in goal and i really have questions about their other goalie in there david riddich and, and I just have a hard time with those two guys. And, and I just don't think they've done enough yet. And plus the fact that there's still kind of Johnny Goudreau, although, you know, he's still signed for next year, but they didn't really address that issue, I don't think. So that's why I have Calgary down here. That's, yeah, okay, great points. And um, I'm going to stick with my original, but you guys really talked me into almost taking Winnipeg here, too. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going to be tough for that defense to make it unless – I just think they have the opportunity to add there. Um, I got mm -hmm. Calgary as well, and mostly I have Calgary because I think Winnipeg can do things throughout the season to help their defense – However, I don't think Calgary has much room to do anything to help their whole roster. I think if Goudreau does not bounce back, and if and that's a big if, and if Monaghan doesn't become what every he he's just worse every year, and um, their their offensive depth is not very good, and I don't like and their defensive depth really isn't that great either after losing Brody and you know bringing in Hamannick. Yeah, I don't see much in there. I love a couple other guys like Rasmussen, Jordano's not getting any older. And I agree with you. Maybe it's just that imprint of seeing Riddich, Riddich flounder in the playoffs so badly that I don't know if his confidence is ever going to be able to come back. And I do like Mark Markstrom, but uh, it's got the same problem as Winnipeg. 
uh, with uh, Brassois and uh, but I'll take Hellebuck over Markstrom. You see what I'm going there? So that's pretty much why I'm going Calgary. But you guys brought up a really good point because in that division, that defense is going to take a pummeling in Winnipeg and and. Uh, that uh, those that that almost had you almost had me changing my mind on the fly there. Uh, okay, let's go with number five then. Uh, number number five, I have the Calgary Flames. Uh, depth <laughs> is depth is a huge issue for this team across the board. Forwards, defensively, goaltending. Uh, the the depth is going to be a big problem. If we start up front here, they're they're a four player offense. Uh-huh. They have their top line with Goudreau, Monaghan, and Lindholm. And then they have Matthew Kachuk, who can absolutely light it up offensively. But outside of that, Maybe that's you're it. relying on guys you know that, that aren't necessarily consistent to g- consistently giving you high-level offense. Guys like Andrew Mangiapane, Michael Backlund is much better suited, in my opinion, to be a third-line center than a second-line center. They, you know, Milan Lucic in your, in your, on your third line. We'll see what Dylan Dubé can do. He had a really good playoffs last year, but, um, you know, I don't know if he's going to drastically change the depth scoring of this team. I just, I look at them with not enough scoring up front. Their defense, I think, has taken a hit with Brody gone. Um, they brought in Tanev uh, from Vancouver. I definitely think that's a downgrade from Brody, though, in my opinion. Markstrom had a career year last year. We'll see if he can do that again. Uh, but they gave him a massive contract. He, he better do that again, because if he doesn't, Calgary's in trouble. I just have too many depth issues with this team in a very difficult division, so I have them just missing the playoffs at five. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Calgary Flames at number five as well. It's like we have identical lists. Hopefully it doesn't go like that all the way, but... <laughs> Calgary Flames, I, I'm the same way. I, I, I love hearing Calgary and you hear so much and so much hype about Calgary and you've been seeing it all over Twitter about mm-hmm. Calgary Flames maybe being one of the dominators in the Canadian division. And that could totally be a case. They could totally prove us wrong, but their depth it, it is a major case. Like their bottom line is probably one of the worst lines, like Nordstrom, Bennett, and uh, Dominic Simone. Mm. Like it, it's definitely not the best. And then you have Milan Lucic probably playing on your third line. It's definitely not that good of a look. And then Chris Rattanov, I know people are talking about Chris Rattanov being a big pickup, but everyone was trash talking him when he was in Vancouver. He was not a very good defenseman there was Vancouver. He was injured. He always had problems. Now he's coming to Vancouver, or Calgary, and everyone's saying that he's going to be a really good defenseman for the uh, Calgary Flames. I don't see it that way. I see them almost struggling a bit more defensively this year, especially with Giordano now being at 37. I know people are saying he won a Norris Trophy two years ago. It doesn't matter. He's aging. He's getting older. Up, up at this age, usually they start going downhill, and their goalies are a bit questionable as well. So I have the Calgary Flames at number five. Okay. It's, that's a <laughs> well, great point. Steel. Yeah, well, obviously, because I had Calgary lower, so I flip-flopped with you guys. I have Winnipeg here. Okay. I I, I agreed with what um, Perlo said previously because I think I would much rather have Hullabuck as more of a uh, – when you have a goalie, you, you give your team a chance to win every night. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying that Markstrom isn't a good goalie, but I just have way more confidence in Hellebuck as a goalie than I do in Markstrom. And and I also think that um, although they're not quite as deep, but they, I think Winnipeg did. I mean, they have Lillian on the team. They've got Stasny. They, you know what I mean. So they they've got some. I, they do have some offense, but that where they're lacking is their defense. You know what I mean? So I think they're a step better than Calgary. And because of the goalie situation in Calgary, um, I like Winnipeg finishing ahead because I like their goalie tandem a little better than in Calgary. So I have Winnipeg finishing in the fifth position. And obviously, I kind of sold myself out for uh, the previously as Winnipeg was the next one because of their depth on D and me waffling on that. Um, I also, the reason why I'm taking Cal, uh, Winnipeg over Calgary is you mentioned, Steele, the Stastny pickup. Um, they have Lowry. They have great defensive forwards to uh, um, to help out Shifley 
I mean, they're all very, very good defensively. Um, bringing in Stastny's big. He's very. He's been a very underrated defensive center for a long time, and at his age, he can still perform that role. Maybe not with the same offense, which helps out the defense quite a bit. Where I don't feel you have that same kind of forwards in Calgary to be able to help out. But I do like Calgary's D better than than Winnipeg. So that, there's there's that. But I'm still. I, I agree. I think I just think Winnipeg uh, will be uh, is is better suited to to take out Calgary. So we now get into what would be the playoffs, right? These are the playoff teams coming up there after this. Go. This is where it really does get interesting in this division. Uh, I'm I've been ex- I've been kind of all a little giddy to find out <laughs> what y'all got because first of all, we're going to start, of course, with the goat number four. What do you got there, Johnny? Montreal Canadiens at number four. I, I, I think they're a playoff team. Now, there's definitely questions with so many roster changes this offseason. I certainly think if you know there's a chance that this team could really tank it this year if they don't have that chemistry right out of the gate. But looking at that team on paper and the moves that they've made, they should be in the playoffs. I mean, adding to Foley, adding Josh Anderson, adding Edmondson to kind of round out your top four on D, and you have Carey Price in goal. And Carey Price in a shortened season is scary to me because that the problem with Price over the last few years is he's been overworked and he's he's played way too many games and he hasn't had a reliable backup to take some of that pressure off. Well, they went out and they got Jake Allen, so he now has a reliable backup who can actually play a significant number of games. Mm -hmm. And it's a shortened season, which means Price isn't going to have to worry about playing 65 games this year. He's only going to have to worry about playing 40, maybe, maybe even less than that. We saw how good Price was in the postseason last year against Pittsburgh and against Philadelphia. Even though they lost to the Flyers, he was still outstanding. Uh, I think shortened year is just what the doctor ordered for Carey Price, and he could be a scary good goalie this year for the Canadians. I've got them in the playoffs at four. Uh, I got the Vancouver Canucks at number four. Uh, I think the Vancouver Canucks did a lot this year. I know a lot of teams or a lot of people have the Canucks out of the playoffs this year. I don't believe so. Uh, I think the way that they made some big moves on defense, uh, rumors have it that Travis Hamannick will most likely be signing there today. Uh, and then you have Nate Schmidt as well, who they added there onto the team. So this defense core is looking very loaded. Uh, Brain Halpy, this was his first year where he kind of had a bad year. Most of his career has been great. Uh, I think a great goalie tandem between Halpy and Demko will be just what the doctor needs. Uh, it's like same thing with Price. I think Halpy and Demko will be a great tandem. The only thing that I got to worry about with Vancouver is their depth. If Niels Hoglander, I know a lot of Canucks fans have been hyping him up. If he doesn't produce, you're not going to have really a second line right winger unless Jake Vertanen jumps up for you. So your depth is looking a little bleak to say the least. So I'm going to be giving Vancouver uh, this four spot. Um, also, I see them way better than the uh, um, Calgary Flames. I see them, see them able to produce a lot more offense and play a lot better defense as well. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I got Montreal here. Okay. I, I really like I, – I agree with everything that John said. Every, what, everything on paper, they should be there. Okay, and uh, we talked about this on our previous video about Montreal. I think that they've gained from subtraction. They lost, they got rid of Domi, but they brought in, you know what I mean. And so they got Suzuki, Kakinen Yemi, and Price, and they played Philadelphia so physical, and they should have probably have won that series in my mind. Okay, I think they just got out Carter Hearted. <laughs> I think Carter Hart stood on his head and took that series for Philadelphia uh, and outshined Price. Okay, but uh, John, exactly what you said, man. Shortened season, uh, Price is going to probably play thirty, maybe thirty-five, thirty-seven games, maybe forty. And and Allen was a great pickup for him. So yeah, I, I got Montreal making making it here on this spot. Good point, Steele. Uh, yeah, I'm. I I also have Montreal here. 
Um, mostly because I do have concerns, and we've talked about this at Great Length Steel, about how they've changed so much on their roster. Um, the roster does look good, but I really like. I I would have had them higher with the moves they made if it was an 82 game season, possibly. But because it's a 56, I'm a little afraid they're going to come out like disheveled. Uh, the first couple of games will be excitement. They'll, they might win a couple of games just on the excitement of the ownership doing what they did and really mm-hmm. putting it together. Not to mention Claude Julian is a just absolute brilliant coach. Could get coach of the year this year if he brings Montreal as high as they possibly could. Unfortunately, with Price in the net, it's pretty hard to get coach of the year. But uh, <laughs> that's the thing, right? But uh, again, even with all those, though, you mentioned it. They got a better defense this year. They have a deeper lineup. Uh, uh, Price is not going to be as stretched physically this year with uh, Allen. They were getting Allen from St. Louis. So I'm thinking that uh, Price, even if things are a little bit disheveled, Price will, will be able to fill the gap there and get him into the fourth spot. Um, like I said, I'm tempted to be higher, but I, I just I can't see them not having issues with chemistry and all that to start off within the new system and players learning the new system without practicing and stuff like that. That's why I have them there. All right. Now we're getting more into the nitty gritty, <laughs> especially with Peyton taking four Vancouver in four brings the drama to heighten levels. So let's go three. Johnny boy. What do you got for three? The Edmonton Oilers. I, I Edmonton's a good team and we, all of these teams in the top four are really good teams and at Edmonton we know they have the offense I mean they've got two superstars in McDavid and Dry Saddle uh, I think they've really done a good job of adding to their offensive depth this offseason which is one of my favorite things I've seen a team do this offseason bringing in Kyle Turris bringing in Dominic Cahoon getting Jesse Poyarvi to come back over that they're not going to be so heavily reliant on McDavid and Drysaddle to do all of their scoring this year, which is a huge boost for the, for Edmonton. Thing I'm worried about though is that goaltending tandem, Koskinen and Smith. I'm Koskinen shown signs of being good. Smith, I think, is pretty much done. Um, I think he can be a backup, but he's not going to carry a team anymore. And that D worries me a little bit. Oscar Clefbaum's out for the entire season. He's certainly one of your better defensemen up there in Edmonton. And they brought in Tyson Barry, who certainly is going to help the power play and is certainly going to move the puck. But he's he's pretty suspect in his own zone at times. And we saw him throughout his career, not only in Colorado, but also in Toronto last year, really have a rough time in his own zone with playing actual defense. So I have questions about the defense and goaltending, but there's just so much offense and so much greatness on that team with McDavid and Drysaddle. They're certainly going to be a playoff team, and I've got them at three. I got uh, Montreal at number three. Uh, I think Carey Price and Jake Allen will have an ex- absolute explosion this season. I know a lot of people are worried about chemistry, but that's with a lot of teams this year. A lot of teams are going to have chemistry issues. Even the Emmett, you know, is Vancouver Canucks. They got a lot of new defensemen on that team. No matter which team you look at it, there's a lot of new faces on everyone. And that's the same with the Montreal Canadiens. But they're going to have to have a lot of people rebound. The two guys that they're going to have to need to rebound is Drew Ann and Josh Anderson. Uh, Brendan Gallagher as well had a career year last year. In 59 games, he had 43 points. If he played a little bit more games, he would have been passing all his career highs throughout his career. And he would have put up an all-star year. Uh, This Montreal Canadiens team looks very good. Their defense looks gritty. It looks like it will be hell to go up against, especially in this Canadian division where you're going to be playing this team a lot. And you're going to be seeing a lot of Ben Chirot. You're going to be seeing a lot of Joe Emmitson and Shea Weber. And it's going to be pretty painful. And then, of course, you got Carey Price back there as well. This Montreal Canadiens team is going to be a tank. And I can almost see this Canadian team finishing all the way to bottom, all the way to the top. It just all depends on if Carey Price can catch a hold or a cold or hot streak. Just depends on how the Canadians can play, but I have them finishing in that third spot. Good point, man. Wow, man. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> See, here's my key factor with every single team out of the gates. How are you going to be in those first 10 games? 
mm-hmm. because if you look at – and a lot of the teams, especially in the north, had a lot of turnover, had a lot of guys in and out of the lineup that were not there the previous year that are now there this year. You know what I mean? And or subtraction and or whatever the case is. You know what I mean? And I think that that's going to have a significant effect on teams coming out of the gate, uh, especially with, with the shortened um, training camps. And like we've mentioned it before and talked about it, you know, so many times, no preseason. And then now your first 10 games, basically, and every game is now a four point swing, basically. And it's even more so in the north because there's only seven teams now. Right. So with the third position, I have Vancouver. Um, I, I like Vancouver. I like what they've done. Um, I think bringing in Hopi is going to put them over the hump and is going to bring them into a, a better position where they'll be able to have more control of their destiny. I, I just like what they've done and I like bringing in Hopi. Uh, and I just think that that's going to help propel them. I, I think they're a, a I think they're just that step above the Canadians, but with the Canadians or even with Vancouver and, and, you know, you could say this almost about any of the teams in the top, depending on how they come out of the gate, you're going to be able to interchange all these top four teams. Okay. If you come out of the gates and you're three and seven and everybody else ahead of you is, is seven and three or eight and two or, or more, that's going to be a tough hole to climb out of. So I just like Vancouver at number three. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I I've got Edmonton at number three as well as John, and for a, lo- a lot of the reasons he said, I'll keep it pretty simple. But I just don't like that. Con- I don't like Smith as my backup goaltender, and I, they don't have anybody to replace him. Uh, he's going to lose a lot of games for them. If they had a better goaltending tandem, I would definitely have them higher here. I too. I I'm I'm also a little I'm a little more questionable as you are with tourists because tourists really floundered a lot last year in Nashville and I know it was a small contract but he hasn't really shown himself to be what you call a prototypical third line center um, they're going to be all offense in Edmonton it's going to be pure offense and if they play like that and they just try to do the old Edmonton Oilers way of beating you seven to four. Uh, maybe they'll have a, a lot of success because they have the guns to do it. Also with Barry, um, if you remember when he was in Colorado, he almost was, the, I think he was pretty much the biggest reason Patrick Waugh left the organization. <laughs> Patrick Waugh wanted him gone. And they, yep. and they the lot, for two years, he was begging them to get rid of Barry. And Patrick Waugh, as much as he can be a jerk, he, he's a very smart hockey mind. He said, that's it, I'm done. So that shows you the kind of frustration his defensive game can have on a person. Yep. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. I got him. So let's go two then, John. This, is, this one's interesting because now we're down to – yeah. Very tough, tough picks. Here. Toronto Maple Leafs. This is this has got to be the year for Toronto that they finally produce and show themselves to be the team that they're expected to be. Like th- this has to be the year because for the last three off seasons, they've made significant changes. They've tried all sorts of different line combinations. They've tried two different coaches. Now this has to be the year for Toronto. They have to be a top level team this year. I like what they've done this offseason. They brought in a gritty veteran like Wayne Simmons. They brought in Joe Thornton. They added to that defense with TJ Brody, Zach Bogosian, bring back Dermot, having Miko Lettinen to come over uh, for, from Europe to play. I mean, this is the first year I look at Toronto's defense, and I'm like, wow, they're actually deep on the back end. They have like eight NHL defensemen this year. I mean... Uh, if the if their defensive problems are fixed, I mean that's been the one thing holding this team back. We know the the firepower up front. We know the star power that they have. It's been the defense holding them back. This has got to be the year that they finally fix that. This has got to be the year that Toronto finally is a top team, and I've got them second in this division. I got the Edmonton Oilers finishing second in the division. 
Uh, I think the team, what they did, uh, they made a lot of improvements. Cal Turris, um, I think he'll do great alongside Jesse Pugliarvi and Josh Archibald. I think Turris will produce the the amount of points he needs to produce. And he's been focusing more on his two-way game, which is a big thing he needed to produce on. Tyson Berry, we need a better five-on-five game. We Our transition game was terrible against the Chicago Blackhawks. And it is the reason why we mostly lit in a lot of our goals was because we couldn't get the puck out of our own zone. You let it get to Adam Larson. You, he tried to chip it down the board. See, so would turn it over. So I think the Edmonton Oilers with the the stuff that they did. The only worry, like I said, is the the tandem between Koskinen and Smith. Smith is very inconsistent, and he's been like that for the past two years. Will he get worse going into this upcoming season? Uh, is going to be the biggest question for the Edmonton Oilers. But I do see them finishing second in the Canadian Division. Awesome. Hey, I think we're going to agree on one here, uh, uh, Peyton, because I also selected uh, the Edmonton Oilers uh, to finish second in this in this division as well. I, I do agree with everything that you said. I like all the moves that they've made in this in, in the offseason so far this year. But I think it's going to be too much offense for everybody else down through the rest of the, the division, with the exception, obviously, of my number one pick. But. I just think that the the offense and now their defense has gotten a little better. Um, yeah, their goalie tandem is a little bit, eh, you know what I mean? They're, they're going to be missing uh, Clef Blom, Oscar Clef Blom. They're going to be missing him a little bit. But look, Connor McDavid, come on. Nugent Hopkins, come on. I, I just think it's going to be too much for the rest of the division. So I have Edmonton at number two. Okay. Uh I, you brought up some again. You got like now. I'm rethinking myself already. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you really know, we so did great. this on purpose, right, Steve? Dry right. and McDavid. I mean, they are maybe the two best top, at least two of the top five centers in the league right now, and they got him. So I mean, it's pretty hard not to go against that. But I have Toronto at two as well. Um, the uh, I like the additions that they made. Um, I also. Um, think that they're the new system. Uh, Keith Sheldon Keith is going to have a chance to be able to really put the system in 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 play now to really get it set in the heads of the players that are there. He had he came in halfway through the season. He's gonna, this is going to be a first time he's got a full season to give her at with it. And then you've got veterans like Thornton coming in that have known to be leaders like Thornton was such a great leader I don't know what he's going to do on the ice honestly at this age but um for the leadership ability that he showed in San Jose when he took a step down as captain seamlessly and just said you know here you go to Joe Pavelski or is Joe Pavelski that took over there right or is it yeah Joe Pavelski yeah. took over at that time and he did it seamlessly didn't complain didn't show any problems with it, whatever. That kind of leadership and playing for the team and not yourself, I think, is really needed in Toronto. I, I think it was an underrated move by the Leafs to be able to pick up that pick up Thornton for that for that reason and that reason alone. It's very tough in a Toronto market to play as a team a lot of times. I, I know that's hard to, but you're getting bombarded by uh, media so much that it affects the mental state of what you're doing on the ice sometimes. And sometimes you take put too much pressure on yourself and start trying to be better. It feels like you're doing it for the team, but really you're doing it for yourself. And Joe Thorne's going to help out with that a lot. Um, so I'm like... Winning in this, like you guys said, the offense or being in the second position as well, or even being first. Any of these teams could mix and mix and match. Wouldn't surprise me at all. So now we got our number one. John, what do you got? I'm way higher on this team than I think a lot of other people are, but I'm sticking with it. The Vancouver Canucks. I I am so high on the Canucks heading into this year. And so many people have been talking about what they lost this offseason. What did they lose this offseason? Yeah, Markstrom's gone, but they brought in Braden Holtby, who just yeah. won a Stanley Cup in 2018. And Thatcher Demko, I think Thatcher Demko is going to surprise a lot of people yeah. this year. That kid is ready. He yeah. was he looked so good coming in for Markstrom in the playoffs last year. Absolutely stood on his head against Vegas. 
Thatcher Demko is ready. Holpe is the perfect kind of veteran tandem guy to go along with him who's had a ton of success. They're loaded with offensive firepower with, from you know a lot of young kids up front who are still improving. Horvat, Pedersen, Besser, JT Miller. I mean, this team's going to score goals. They lost Chris Tanev, which I don't even think is really that big of a loss on the back end because they brought in Nate Schmidt from Vegas, and Schmidt is a clear upgrade over Tanev. So their their defense is better. They've got Hamannick coming in likely on a one-year deal. Um, they've rounded out their decor. I think they've got a great goaltending tandem, and they've got a, young, a ton of young talent up front. I'm taking Vancouver to shock a lot of people and finish first. Okay. I, uh, for me... I have first place Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, honestly, I've been watching a lot of their stuff because, of course, it's Toronto. It's all over the media. But um, Toronto, they, they've they kind of built the first line there with Thornton, Matthews, and Marner. And this Toronto Maple Leafs team, it's always been good. It's always been a good team. It's just they've had problems just with their culture. They have a lot of younger guys. And I've seen it from the times of Oilers rebuilding. When you have a really long, young team, you have a really, really bad locker room. And that might be the case there in Toronto. We don't really know. But they've had some bad problems there over the past couple of years with this wrong, young roster. Now bringing in Thornton, bringing in Simmons, and still having Spencer there, and also bringing in TJ Brody, I think will be a lot for the Toronto Maple Leafs this year, and it will help them in this tight schedule. You don't have to play George, uh, Joe Thornton every game, but Joe Thornton's still a fantastic guy. This has been a guy that's put up 100 points in a season before, and he's played some really good hockey. So I do see the Toronto Maple Leafs taking first place in the uh, the North Division. Still. Awesome, man. Um, yeah, what he said. <laughs> I I also agree. I, I think uh, Toronto is going to – I think this might be basically what, you know, John said it earlier because, John, you have them in second, right, I believe. Mm. And so – but I believe that Toronto has actually done more than what they need to do to, to finally get over the hump this year. And I think putting them into the Canadian – an all-Canadian league is really, really going to help them. Um, I also agree with bringing in TJ Brody is going to be a big help in the room for them. I also believe that, you know, look, when you got Austin Matthews and <clears throat> John Tavares and Mitch Marner, then you throw in Will William Nylander. I mean, <clears throat> OK, <laughs> I, I sign me up for that. I, I'm signing up for that all day long. Can their goalies, Anderson and Campbell, can they? Can they handle it this year? Can their defense, can their young guns come in and, and take care of business? That's going to be the question. But I think that putting them in with the North has really elevated them to a point where I think that they are definitely going to take that next step and be the be the winner of the North. Awesome. And uh, I got Vancouver as well. Uh, this I was really surprised when John had Vancouver as well. We seem to be parallel on a lot of things a lot of the time. I don't know. We think the same or something. I don't know. But gosh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> weird. Uh, I got Vancouver as well. I, I, I'm telling. I Peterson, man, the guy just or Peterson, Peterson, Peterson. I remember somebody commented. Did, did he say Peterson? Yeah, I did. Because when he first came in the league, it was Peterson, Peterson, and then Van Peterson said he liked Peterson. He liked it. So, really? Yeah, because they change yeah. their names so many times. But I just love him so much, man. I don't, I think he he. We talk about Matthews and we talk about McKinnon and we talk about McDavid. I put him right there, and I'm almost tempted to put him just below McDavid. I honestly just love that guy so much. Bo Horvat, this is the year, man. If you don't know who Bo Horvat is after this year, you're going to know who he is. This is like a perfect year for him to go out and possibly get a Selkie um, and really show people what he's all about, his size and everything that they have. Not to mention, they just, I think they're working on an extension for Green. Well, you better because he's one of, he's an unbelievable coach. Fantastic coach. I do agree with uh, John about the upgrades on defense, especially Tanev. I never really, I was like, what? Yeah, okay, whatever. I'm not going to – Schmidt, I know, Tan, if you're listening out there, and I, I don't mean to hurt your feelings. I'm, I'm sure you'll be all right. But <laughs> but Schmidt is a huge upgrade. Um, I am a little worried about their 
their depth in Vancouver if they start having injuries, but you can say that about a lot of these teams. The reason why I didn't put Toronto up here is, again, their forward depth concerns me a little more. It's their lower lines. I like Vancouver's lower lines than I do Toronto's, and I like their defense still better than Toronto's. And if Demko is what he was in the playoffs, watch out. This team is going to be insane. Well, that's our full 42, boys and girls. That's all we have to give. Go over to SteelFlyers.com. You can check out all of our stuff over there. We have everything, our Twitters, everything like that. Go there. Check it out. It's getting better and better every day. That should be our slogan. Have a good day, everybody. Lots of love to you.